Don't ever quit. <laughs> if ever I felt like quitting, it's now. Amen. Uh, don't ever quit on Jesus. Don't ever say it's over. But, you know, really, it's an amazing life that we have, isn't it? I want you to open up your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew cap uh, chapter 20. I'm just going to read some scriptures here. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Amen. Jesus, the resurrection and the life. What an amazing uh, Savior that we have. What, a, what an amazing God. It says here in uh, uh, Matthew 20, uh, verse 18, it says, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed. This is Jesus speaking. He will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him uh, to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. So this interesting thing here, Jesus is talking about himself in the third person. He's saying on the third day that this person's going to rise again. Behold, I believe it's an amazing thing that, that we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. The life of God flows through him. And he said with all boldness and with all authority, he said on the third day he will rise again. Because he rose again, friend, you and I can live. Amen. Because he rose again, you and I can live a victorious life. Because he rose again, there's something about Jesus that wants to get inside us and, and around us. He had no doubt whatsoever that he would rise again on the third day. Jesus knew God's plan of salvation. <laughs> oh, Jesus, hallelujah. You know, when Jesus lived on this planet, he knew that God had a plan of redemption. Do you know that God's got a plan of redemption? Do you know that God's got a plan for your life? You know that God wants to do things in you that you never ever thought possible. You know that God's thoughts about you are so far above your thoughts. Do you know that He wants to do more than you could ever think? If Jesus had lived on this earth and, and lived even a sinless life and then went back to heaven, we would still be lost. If Jesus would have come to this earth and lived here and healed a few people and then went back to heaven, you and I would be still lost. If he had lived on this earth and cast out demons and, and went uh, back to heaven, we would be still lost. There would be no hope for us. We'd be still lost. But if Jesus lived on this earth and willingly gave his life a ransom for sin, went all the way to Hades itself and rose again on the third day, triumphing over hell and death, this is our assurance. Amen. This is our victory. The price is paid. I am redeemed. I am saved. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Jesus all the day long. Amen. Blessed assurance. Friend, have you got a story today? Have you got a story? This is my story. I am saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I am heaven bound. Hallelujah. This is my story today. I might have been down, but Jesus lifted me up. Amen. This is my story today. I want to go out and tell my story to the world. I am redeemed. Hallelujah. This is my story. This is my song. I've been delivered. This is my story. I've been saved. This is my story. I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. This is my story. I've been healed in the name of This is my story. Hallelujah. The power of God flows through. This is my story. Hallelujah. This is my story. Glory to God. This is my story. I got a story to tell. This is my story. This is my story. Oh, hallelujah. If you got a story, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. The resurrection of Jesus, the victory of the cross. Hallelujah. This is my story. 
This is my story, hallelujah. Because of Jesus, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, hallelujah. All fear is gone, amen. Because he lives, because he lives. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, you can all go, thank you. Glory, hallelujah. (laughs) The resurrection of Jesus, the victory of the cross, what did it mean? What did it mean? It meant my shackles were broken. It meant that I am free after the resurrection. Oh, friends, amazing things happen. What did it mean? Don't live a Christian life full of sickness and fear. Know that you've been delivered, amen. Don't quit on Jesus. Don't give up. Always believe, only believe, only believe. In Matthew 28, I want you to just have a look at Matthew 28. Amazing verses of Scripture. What a mighty God we serve. And when and it says, verse 17, When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them. This is after the resurrection. And he spoke and he said these words with, with authority. He said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even till the end of the ages. Jesus spoke, and he spoke these words. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Friend, I want to tell you that that authority Jesus has given to us. He, Jesus, smashed Satan's grip on humanity. The grip that the enemy had on mankind has been smashed. This is my story. The grip that the enemy had on my life has been smashed. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I've been washed in the blood. I've been touched by the master's hand. I am a new creation. I am a brand new man. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Jesus all the day long. I thank my God for the resurrection of Jesus because it paid a price that I couldn't pay. It paid a price that set me free. Hallelujah. I want to tell you today, I am free. I am free. I am not bound by sin. I am not bound by Satan's plan. God has got a plan for my life and I want to tell you, He has fearfully and wonderfully made me. And we are going to triumph over every work of Satan. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven. Then he says, go therefore and make disciples. Jesus smashed the Satan's grip. I thank God for that. Do you thank God for that? He crushed his head. Now he stands and declares, all authority has been given to me. And I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I praise God for the story of Jesus. And friend, I want to tell you that if you can grab the anointing of God, and if you can grab the word of God, and if you can start to speak the positive things of God, because I know and I understand this, that as Jesus spoke words, as he spoke, all authority has been given unto me. I want to tell you that those words went forth with power and with authority and smashed every strong. Stronghold, amen. Every demon in hell shattered, shuddered rather, as Jesus spoke those words. All authority has been given to me. As he spoke those words, and as he said, and I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it, and I'm going to give my people the keys of the kingdom, and whatever they bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever they loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I want to tell you, every devil in hell cringed, and you have that authority that God has given to you. And if you start speaking the word of God, and not how you feel and how you think, but you say what God says about yourself, you too will terrify the devil. I believe the church is to terrify the devil, not to accommodate the devil, not to make excuses for the devil, not to play church, but to be the church. The church triumphant. I will build my church. Not Jesus not only had smashed Satan's grip on humanity, but Jesus had to smash unbelief, religious concepts, wrong thinking, so the church would rise and take its place. Man's greatest enemy is unbelief and mixture. The church has become a place of mixture. And friend, you can have a church today and you can have it and it's all nice and cuddly and cozy. 
Yes, we've gone through a little bit of stuff here today. Yes, it's not been easy for me to preach in that atmosphere. No, it's not been easy, but I want to tell you, by the power of God that's in me, I will smash that atmosphere in the name of Jesus, and I will preach the Word of God, and I will preach the authority of Jesus, and I will build an atmosphere of praise and worship and thanksgiving to our God, because this is my story. This is my song, praising my Jesus all the day long, because He saved me, and He's delivered me. He's taken me out of the miry clay. He's put my feet upon a rock. Hallelujah. And he said, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you, Neil. I will be with you wherever you go. And all authority has been given to me. And now I give that authority to you. Go and make disciples. Set captives free. Cast out devils. I knew the devil didn't want this message preached this morning. But I want to tell you, I've been, this has been bubbling in. <laughs> oh, we had to smash it. You can, have, you can have, friend, what looks nice, kosher, comfortable, but I want to tell you, without the Holy Ghost, you're nothing but a club. Never take the Holy Spirit. David said, Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And I want to tell you many times that the enemy has stolen the Holy Spirit out of the church. We need the Holy Spirit, friends. Can I hear an amen? We need the Holy Spirit. We need to smash unbelief. Only believe all things are possible. We've got to start to change. Only believe all things are possible. Resurrection life now flows through us, amen. I have resurrection life now. I'm not waiting for it. All that Jesus won is mine. Is mine, hallelujah. That authority has been given to us. He just didn't do it there. He didn't need, he didn't need anything. He said, no, I want it back for humanity. He already had authority over the devil. The devil could not touch Jesus. I want to tell you, they tried to get him. He just turned around and walked through the crowd. If they came, he could have just called down 12 legions of angels. I'm going to do it for you so you can have authority. Don't be a wimp. Be a man or a woman of God. All authority has been given to us. Jesus demonstrated his authority over the works of Satan. He cast out devils. How many people know that he cast out devils? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He, he, he triumphed over the works of Satan. He also proved his authority over nature. He walked on water, cursed the fig tree, spoke to the wind of the sea, and they obeyed him. He has authority. And now this power, this authority has been given to us. And now we have to demonstrate this power. Friend, I've heard of many supernatural acts almost too extreme to talk about. Because when you start talking about the supernatural acts of God, many people don't understand. But friend, you've got to read the Bible and you've got to find out what, the, what Jesus did in the Bible days. You've got to find out what God did in the Old Testament, what Jesus did in the New Testament. He moved with signs and wonders and miracles. He was a demonstrator of the power and the authority. And slowly but slowly, it's ebbed out of the church until the church is but a figment of, of, of what God really wants. We're just a shadow. But I want to tell you, God is going to pour out His Spirit again upon the church and the church will rise again to the fullness of its glory and the power of God will be demonstrated and we'll see the demonstration demonstration and signs and wonders and things that will happen in the name of Jesus will just be that. Oh man, I've heard of stories. People walking on water. Heard of a story. It was in a book and a, this, 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 this writer, as he was writing about it, said that these people that were in a, in a jungle situation... And they had all the supplies, there'd been floods and goodness knows what else that had almost wiped out a village. All their vegetable gardens and everything had got washed away. They had no food. They had, there were many people that were, were in dire straits for, for healings and things like that in their body. And this bunch of people, missionaries, were going in to help this village and preach Jesus. 
And they got to a flooded river and it was a torrent. They were just raging river. And, and they looked at it and they said, we can't go. We can't get across. That's why I said this morning, never give up on Jesus. Don't quit on Jesus. Don't say we can't cross. Don't say we won't make it. Don't say it will never happen. Friend, I want to tell you, it's going to happen or hell's going to have to freeze over because God's going to have a church without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. He's going to have a powerful church. But if we quit, and these people, while they were standing there looking at the river, they were watching the river. It was just raging torrent. And, and they, one young man, he, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, put your foot in the river. Put your foot in the river. He said, in the natural, you think no. And as he stepped out and put his foot there, it found solid and he just walked. And a bunch of them all carried that stuff across, carried it across. Friend, if there was a bridge there, we, we, we Christians, we go up to the river and we put our foot. Ah, you can't walk on water. I want to tell you, friends, if there is an emergency and Jesus wants to get you across, you'll be amazed what you can do. Is that okay to talk like that? Is that okay? You, you want, oh, well, praise the Lord, you're going to be okay. I'm a bit stirred up this morning. <laughs> Jesus. I've heard of amazing things. But Jesus, it says there that they, Jesus walked on the water. Philip had a, was transported from one place to another in a few minutes. I've heard of people that that's happening in today's world. But if you've got a flight that can go there, you don't have to go that other way. But if there's no flights, God can do anything. He wants to get you there, he'll get you there. That's what I'm saying. If, he, if, if there's no other way, he'll make a way. Sixteen-year-old boy, TB, dying in a, in, in a room. Hopelessness all around him. Jesus walks into his room. How many people would love Jesus to walk into your room? Jesus walked into the room and he walked over to him and he laid his hands on him and he says, be loosed. That was Kenneth Hagin. At 16, TB through his body, it was other diseases, whatever. They said there was hopelessness, he was going to die. But Jesus walked into his room, hallelujah. Oh my God, will you walk into this room? Will you walk in with your power? Will you walk in with your authority? Will you walk in by the mighty Holy Spirit power and raise us up? Yes. Lord, lift us up. Did it for Kenneth, he'll do it for you. We serve a risen Savior. The joy that was set before him, he, he endured the cross. What does that mean? It means total deliverance for all. Freedom from all Satan's class. It meant your, your freedom from sickness and pain. You've got to get this, friends. It means it's already done. 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 It's already done. But friend, it's done. It's done. Reinhard Bonnke said it like this. He said, if you want a drink, you reach out and you take it. If you need to be healed, you reach out and you take it. I got up this morning and I walked into my kitchen. I reached into the fridge and I took out some bread. I toasted it. I walked over to the, to the bowl on the thing there, right, raw. Wish I would have taken a bit. Red, lovely tomatoes, red, raw, oh, beautiful. I went over there, I took one out and I sliced it and I ate it, amen. I, I, I didn't man, go through some manifestation. I just reached out and took it. You've got to realize it. You've got to reach out and take your healing. Hallelujah. It's already been paid for in full. It's done, dusted, finished over. But by faith, you reach out and you take it. Reach out and take it. Hallelujah. It's done. If it's not done, he's not going to get back on the cross. He's not going to go on the whipping pole. He's not going to die again and rise again. It's done, finished, kaput, over, out, and once. <laughs> There is nothing more Jesus can do for us. Only believe. Only believe. Oh, just reach out and touch it. Reach out and take it. 
Oh, we got to get this, friends. It's so easy. You can't earn it. Jesus has already paid the price. He's won it for us. Jesus' resurrection uh, smashed Satan's authority. He rose again. He rose again. Praise God, Jesus rose again. He, he, he nailed my sin to the cross. And he rose again, triumphant or his first. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, we now can experience the new birth, born again. Turn to somebody and say, I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm born again. Praise God, I'm born again. What does that mean in one, uh, Colossians 1.12? Giving thanks to our Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance. Hallelujah. Praise God to our Father who has qualified me, who was disqualified because of sin, but God washed my sin away. I praise God today that God has qualified me that I now can be a partaker of the inheritance. Hallelujah. Woo. Don't tell me I can't have it. Don't tell me it's not mine. It is mine because I didn't do it. I didn't earn it, but my God qualified me. Amen. That's worth a shout. Amen. That's worth an applause. Can I put it up on the screen? <laughs> That's worth something, amen. What a saviour. To Colossians 2.15, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle. It's all right, I put, my, I put plastic over my notes. <laughs> you've got to love Jesus. <laughs> Come on, you've got to love Jesus, amen. Come on, throw your hands in the air, you've got to love Jesus. You've got to love Jesus. Come on, you've got to love Jesus, friend. You've got to love Jesus. You've got to love Jesus. You've got to love Jesus. You've got to love, you've got to love Neil. You've got to love. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Praise God for that. Amen. And now as a result of the cross of Calvary, oh, the cross, oh, the cross. Jesus, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross. Amen. Oh, the cross. The cross. Nailed everything to the cross. I want you to have a look with me in Colossians. What a great book this is, Colossians. Colossians. Where to? And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together within him, having forgiven all, sorry, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against you, which is contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. Glory to God, friend. We, the church, need to come again and sit at the cross. Sit at the front of the cross. Hallelujah. It's a bit far down for me. But sit there and look up there and look at him and say, Oh, praise God. Praise God. You nail it to the cross. You nail everything that was against me. Oh, my God. The handwriting, all the things, all the accusations, everything that the devil said. Why, I'll never make it. It's been nailed to the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're a visitor here, your pastor may not sit on the floor. <laughs> but he doesn't know how to get up. So. <laughs> got to sit there somehow or other. We've got to come again around the cross. The cross, the cross, the cross. Praise God. My trespasses are no more. He took them with him and nailed them to the cross. I reckon that's worth a shout. I have a, if you haven't realized, I have a, an imagination. 
And I see Jesus on that cross hanging there. There's guys over one side blaspheming, carrying on and saying if, you're the, if you are that. But there's a lot of, that, man, I want to tell you, there was a lot more going on than that. That's what we see. But in the realm of the Spirit, there was something so much greater. So, he, 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 there were coming, there was spiritual truckload after truckload of filth and mess and sin and shame, and they were piling it on him. He would have been looking there and he would have been thinking, Devil, you think this is your day. But I want to tell you every time, and especially, especially, especially when Neil's bag come up. Bag of wob problems. <laughs> Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and get on going. But I reckon as they were piling that on him, he would have been thinking, you have got no idea what is going on here, devil. But you know what? Most of the church has got no idea what was going on. He was accumulating and take it. He said, man, you might think you're nailing me to the cross, but man, I'm going to nail something to the cross. I'm going to nail every bit of iniquity. I'm going to nail every bit of shame. I'm going to nail every bit of sin. I'm going to nail it there. And it's going to stay there forever. Because on the third day, I'm going to rise again. Hallelujah. I will rise again. On the third day, I will rise again. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them. Praise God, he triumphed over them. Then he rose. I can see it now. Jesus rose from the dead. There's a woman by the name of Mary. She came to the tomb. When she saw that the stone was rolled away, outside the tomb, she began to weep. She began to weep and she began to just, I, I would imagine this woman who loved Jesus. Church, we've got to learn to love Jesus again. We're going, to, we're going to somehow or other allow the supernatural anointing of God to open our eyes of understanding and see what Jesus went through so we can fall in love with him over and over and over again. That was a trouble with the church. They lost their first love. They lost the, the whole concept. But this woman, to me, depicts the whole thing. She loved Jesus. She served Jesus. She knew Jesus. She was with Jesus. And now she's coming with anguish, with bitterness, and the heart was broken. And she's coming. She would have been sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. And the stones rolled away. And she's just, oh, my God, they've stolen him. They've taken him away. But she, the Bible says that she looked in, and she saw two men in white apparel. And she said to them, what have you done with my Lord? Lord. And she said, he is not here. He's risen. And she walked out of the door. And as she walked out of there, she saw a man. And she thought the man was the gardener. And she said to him, what have you done with him? Where have you taken him? And she, the man said, Mary, my God, I want to tell you, if ever there's a time we need to hear Jesus call your name, it's in this hour that you and I live in. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's ever a time that we need to hear Jesus speak to us. Mary, and as soon as she heard Mary, she fell. She, he said, don't touch me. I've not yet gone to my father. But I want to tell you, go tell my disciples. Go tell. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. My <laughs> Roshukabundi Is anybody catching my drift? Can you cheat? <laughs> she, she's beside herself. She, 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 <laughs> oh, she would have got crazy woman running down the street. She wouldn't have been just. No, she would have, he's alive, he's alive, he's risen. 
<laughs> he's alive! He's risen! Oh, shagabundi. <laughs> Somebody say, why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> he's alive! He's risen! Yeah. <sighs> he's alive. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I'll love him all the days of my life. Because he saved me. This is my story. This is my song. Friend, go and tell your neighbors what you've seen and heard. Go and tell your neighbors that he's alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I will face tomorrow. But he set me free! Hallelujah! <laughs> he set me free! Free to be everything that God wants me to be. Friend, oh, I'm spitless. <laughs> But I've got a fire in my belly that is burning brighter and brighter every day. I got a touch at that camp that Roma was talking about. I was driving down there and I was saying, You idiot. It's, the water is freezing. There are others that can do this younger than you. But I got down there and I got into an atmosphere. How many people know that we need to come into an atmosphere? Can you feel an atmosphere in this place? We've had a hard day today, really. Really, have it's been fun, haven't it? But the Holy Ghost never left us, and I know that He's helped me. And I went there, and I saw sixteen to eighteen—I'm not sure—little girls that had just given their life to Jesus, and I came into that atmosphere. And it touched me. And oh, the joy that filled my soul. Something touched me. And now I know. He touched me. And he started to stir in me the cross, the resurrection, the anointing, the power, the victory, the excitement. Of just being there. Friends, we are born to win souls. I want to t encourage you today to go and tell your story to somebody and tell them how much Jesus means to you and tell them that he's alive. And today, if you want to catch what I got. <laughs> Some people are too scared to catch what I got. <laughs> they don't want what I got, Lord. <laughs> Without any fanfare, 
without the trumpet's blade. I'm not going to try that one again. <laughs> if you want a touch, if you want a glimpse, if you want, if you want a stirring, if you if you want to break out of, if you want to push into, just come out of your seat. And let's believe God as we believe in laying on of hands in this house. Believe for the power of God to touch people. He rose again. He rose again. You need a touch of the ghost. You want a touch of the Holy Spirit. I got a touch. It touched me deeply. You know, I was thinking about that, and, and I just saw a little picture of a of the old blacksmith banging away. You know, he's got the coals and he's you know making the metal soft and he's shaping it. But all of a sudden, not because there's something wrong, it's just that they've been used. How many people know that? I don't know about you, but I, I work pretty hard. I do a fair bit. Nancy's never home, out praying for somebody doing this and that. Not that there's anything wrong with you, it's just that you've been laboring and you've been working in the field and, and the coals start to go down a little bit. You know what he does? This might be old fashioned, but he's got a great big thing there. And he just, and it pushes oxygen into that fire. And those coals burst into flame. I don't need oxygen, I need Holy Ghost. I need Holy Ghost. I need the, for Him to breathe on me. Friend, that's all we need is for Him to breathe on us. And this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. I don't know the next line, but I know this is the air I breathe. Holy Spirit living in me. Well, if you need that touch, come on, just slip out. I'm not saying you're something wrong with you, just saying I want more. I want the fire to flame up again. I want to burn for Jesus. I want to burn for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want my life to mean something. I want my life to mean something. Folks, when Jesus hung on that cross, I want you to remember there was so much more going on than man will ever know. Oh, honestly, there is so much more that was going on right then. It wasn't just the thieves on the other side and other people doing things. But God was doing a work a redemptive work that's far beyond our wildest imagination. He nailed every sin, every transgression, anything that was not of God, He nailed it on that cross. We know we read that story where He bore our iniquities, He carried our sin, all that. Read that and understand that he did it all. But friend, you have got a story. We have got a story to tell about a Savior. About a Savior. We've got a story to tell about a Savior who loves us more than we could ever imagine or think. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior.
with my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my we give you praise we give you thanks Father if there's any here today that do not know you as Lord and Saviour that they would claim you as Lord and Saviour of their life in Jesus name Amen God bless you today there's a cup of coffee a cup of tea at the back of the hall be blessed be blessed be blessed